Riding Tasmania with this fella was the best of many big adventures on this bulletproof 2007 Suzuki V-Strom. After a bunch of travels, unfortunately one night it was stolen, but our would-be thieves tried and failed at hotwiring it. This is the story of fixing the only damage to the recovered bike, the ignition barrel, and then changing the other locks so it all operates on the new key. So this is the replacement ignition barrel, got it off Amazon.com. So first test, does old and new actually look like it will line up? So really it's a matter of getting this one here unbolted from this fixing. So I'm wondering if I can get a long socket extension and come in from underneath and just drop the whole unit out. I think if I can drop that star fitting out on both sides that whole assembly will drop off. I am gonna to have to remove this mud guard. So, let's start with that. Okay, let's get this front wheel off. And just trying to find where on earth I put my big hex socket. Don't know. Ten minutes later I find it. Look, I put it away. Who would have thought? Look how simple it is when you actually have the right part. So we'll get this wheel off and then we'll see if we can access the ignition barrel. Alright, so the front wheel's off. But these forks are still in the way. I did try to get in there using the path of least resistance approach without taking any of the fairings or covers off. I did this using a long extension on the drill, but I just couldn't get enough leverage or quite the right angle to unbolt it. So I decided that the covers and the fairing needed to come off. These bolts are in a really hard to reach place and they're really tight. So I've actually gone to the shops and bought the proper driver. It's called a Torx fitting. This one's 100 mil long and it's just got a regular half inch socket wrench fitting on the end. All right, and there we have our old barrel. So I think I'm gonna need to just pair these back and make some connections myself. This one off Amazon came with this little harness, but I don't think it's necessary. Just gonna have a look at whether the color coding on these wires looks to be the same or if there's gonna need to be some guesswork there as well. So I've got on the old one, two reds, a black yellow, a gray, an orange yellow, an orange, a brown. And here, of course, I have a red, a green, black, a black blue, an orange, black white. So that's going to need some forensic work as well. But that's for after lunch. All right, so I'm going to need to work out what each of these does and where they go to to try and match them. I don't understand that one. Black blue. After a bit of Googling, voltage checking, trial and error later, I mapped out this switch and the wiring. The off and lock positions, unsurprisingly, don't connect anything together. Park joins the battery hot, that's the red positive cable that comes straight off the battery, with the tail light, turns that on, and also gives the option for running the hazards. The on location does three things simultaneously. It connects battery hot with the starter switch, 
so that the switch is ready to operate, get the bike running. It also joins these two to allow the switch array for the blinkers and the lights to function. And this orange, yellow, brown, yellow piece runs straight to the ECU and provides a very specific resistance that's built into the switch. This has to be supplied to turn the ECU on. And that's why the geniuses who stole a bike in the first place were unable to hotwire it, only just destroyed the switch and the wiring in the process. So knowing all this helps me to connect the existing wires that are in the bike with the new switch wires, and I'll join them together, get back to work. I'm just painting on something here called liquid electrical tape, which is to provide an extra layer of waterproofing after I've joined the cables together. Cable ties. That's in no way the neatest job you've ever seen, but it's going to do the trick. Putting the front wheel back on and reassembling. <laughs> Now let's hope this part is as simple as it looks. All right, we're getting there. The final thing that I need to do is replace this little rear lock. That came in my set from Amazon. So here's where I'm up to. Simple solution I'm gonna try now. And so I'm just gonna cut a hole in here with the rear. I'm gonna try and give enough access to be able to pull some kind of retaining clip off the back of the lock. And then we can just silicon it back together later. that part was as simple as I hoped. So that just popped off and now I'll shove it out the back. There we go. This is what we're dealing with here. So let's try and get this on without disassembling the entire thing. The locks are changed, the bike's back together again and ready for the road. Even though there was a bit of stuffing around, I hope this encourages you to have a go at this sort of thing. Till next time, that's another project complete.